Papat. Meine Lüge kann ich nicht. Ich habe hier vor dem Deutschen Schild. Ich habe hier das Wasser. Die mit E565 Schild ist mit Paul. This is my land friends. This is John Marie. I haven't seen which I think is John Marie. I get it. It's a touch of the video. And then I also appear for myself. John Marie. Good afternoon, my lord, my lady and my lords. For the third petitioner. My name is Muri. May it please you, my lady and my lords. My name is Nelson Harvey. I appear for the Festive Party of the Law Society of Kenya, together with my two colleagues, Jose Amanua and Kevin Zichuk. Present for notice. Jose and who? Jose Amanua and Kevin Zichuk. Let's go. The man behind the camera. matters we are taking for a month because uh, this afternoon and I believe my young friend Mr. Chibi will address it. We were served with a notice from the office of the deputy registrar indicating that there were several matters that were to be mentioned before this morning, this afternoon. And last evening when we were breaking, we were to come for a ruling. Perhaps we need to have clarity that we may not have a big set of things. We are dealing with the ruling. After I reach the ruling, Supposed to be the leader now. Then, after that, we'll deal with the issues. The leader, the case, therefore, then it means there are some advocates who have got it on record for foreign people who did not participate or they are not participating in this particular proceedings. Like who? Yes, yes, I'll have you. Lord, let it be about us. Let us deal with the spends and many time with this new one. But doesn't it make sense? There is no harm in the eye appearing of the court. Is there any other concern before you leave the room? Our ruling is ready on the consolidated petitions to the lead file being petition number E565. We have set out the structure of the ruling that we begin from our analysis of the issues that we think relevant <coughs> now <coughs> this is the ruling having carefully considered the pleadings submissions and evidence of record we consider the following issues arising for determination one what are the prevailing constitutional and statutory interpretation methods two what are the honors of the dcj and assign judges persons to Article 165, sub Article 4 of the Constitution. Three other related matters. On the first issue, uh, the Constitution is a document to generis. It is the norm which legally commands authority and dominance over any other laws, and its interpretation as of necessity 
must be in a manner that all other laws bow to. The court in S. Vs. Atchison, 1991, um, captured the centrality of the Constitution as follows. The Constitution of a nation is not simply a statute which mechanically defines the structure of government and the relationship between the government and the government. It is a mirror reflecting the national soul, the identification of ideals and aspirations of a nation, the articulation of the values bonding its people and disciplining its government. The spirit and tenor of the Constitution must therefore preside and permit the process of judicial interpretation and judicial discretion. In the matter before the court, the High Court has once again been called upon to address the issue as to whether the Honorable the Deputy Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya, whom we refer to herein as the DCJ, can exercise the power of assigning and empaneling expanded benches for the High Court. As such, the interlink between Articles 161 sub Article 2 and Article 163 sub Article 1 and Article 164 sub 65 sub Article 4 of the Constitution as well as Section 5 of the Judicial Service Act come into play. On that score, it is paramount to briefly look at how the Constitution and the statutes ought to be interpreted. As a starting point, the Constitution itself provides for its own theory of interpretation. That is in Article 20, sub Article 4, and Article 259, sub Article 1. Article 20, sub Article 4, requires courts while interpreting the Bill of Rights to promote the values that underlie an open and democratic society based on human dignity, equality, equity, and freedom, and the spirit, purport and the objects of the Bill of Rights. Article 259, sub Article 1, commands courts to interpret the Constitution in a manner that promotes its purposes, values, principles, advances, and rule of law, human rights, and fundamental freedoms in the Bill of Rights, permits the development of the law, and contributes to good governance. Impaling the Constitution of Kenya as highly transformative, as a highly transformative one, courts have over time developed various methods or canons of interpretation. In the case of David Lee and others versus Attorney General, the learned High Court judges dealt with four constitutional interpretive principles, being that the Constitution must be interpreted holistically, that the Constitution does not favor formalistic approaches to its interpretation, and it must not be interpreted as one rule, a mere statute. The Constitution has provided its own theory of interpretation to protect and to serve its values, objects, and purposes, and that in interpreting the Constitution, non-legal considerations are important to give its true meaning and values. The Supreme Court, in the matter of the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, Supreme Court addressed an opinion reference which have given at paragraph 26, answered the question as to what holistic interpretation of the Constitution means. The court stated as follows. But what is meant by holistic interpretation of the Constitution? It must be, it, it must mean interpreting the Constitution in context. It is contextual analysis of a constitutional provision, reading it alongside and against other provisions, so as to maintain a rational explication of what the Constitution must be taken to mean in the light of the history of the issues in dispute and of the prevailing circumstances. In the case of Tiny Fosa was a attorney general which have given, citation have given, the court was of the firm position that the constitution must be read as an integrated whole. The court observed as follows. The entire constitution has to be read as an integrated whole, and no one particular provision destroying the other, but each sustaining the other. This is the rule of harmony, the rule of completeness and exhaustiveness, and the rule of paramountcy of the written constitution. 
For the tenets that the Constitution does not favor formalistic approaches to its interpretation and that it must not be interpreted as one rule a mere statute, the Supreme Court pronounced itself in the case in the interim independent electoral commission. The court said as follows, the rules of constitutional interpretation do not favor formalistic or positivistic approaches. The Constitution has incorporated non-legal considerations which we must take into account. 